Here we go. The, the dafim are quite sh- short and small, and that has to do not so m- with the with Toisvis. Toisvis in the Masech de Yuma is very verbose, and it's not written by the similar Toisvis that you find in other Masech and sometimes it's very difficult. And then he brings in a lot of other different things. So that's why the dafim are, sh- are shorter, and it makes it easier for Daf Yomi also. So anyway, we're starting from the Vavam base about one, two, three, four, five, seven lines from the top. Ba'ach'ata. So the Gemara says, we just got concluded, uh, we concluded in saying that what? That you, he has to be sequestered from his wife. And that's why he goes to the base of Migdash, so he should not have any relations with his wife, the Kayin Gadol, so he doesn't become Tame. So the Gemara says, why don't we make him be in solitary confinement? Because the reason why you're sequestering him from his wife is because he may have relations with his wife, and he'll be his wife may turn out to be a nida, and he's a, called a bayil nida, and it's and and therefore he'll be tummy for seven days. So the Gemara says, ato mafri besoy. Now that you separate him, because he, you don't want him to get the tuma from his wife, hafri You should separate him from tuma sames from the possibility of his friend coming to visit him. And all of a sudden, dying right in the room. And Thomas Ames is, uh, is something that he'll become Tomei and it'll, have to be, it'll take seven days for him to become pure. So nobody should be allowed to visit the Kayin. He should be totally alone. Amar Rav Tachlifa Avu Rav Huna Mishmei De Rava Rav Tachlifa answered one teretz. Zoy Semeris, from here we see Thomas Ames Hutra Hibit Sibor. The Thomas Ames is permitted in the Tzibor. And so the, there is a machlaikis. Let me explain. We have this before. Um, you, uh, we can't hear you. Oh, Baruch. I got it. Sorry. Yeah, okay. That was my fault. Okay. Okay. So, so we had, let me give you an example. We have a, um, let's say uh, you want to take out a library book, right? And you have a $5 fine. So the library is not going to allow you to take out that book because you have that fine. So they can't uh, allow you to take out a new book. But during COVID, they allow you to take out a book. I'm just giving you this as a marshal. Now, the question is why? Do they, do they look at it as if you don't have a fine? So although it says $5, that fine is as if you don't have a fine. So they let you take out a book. Or, shot is, they override the fact that their policy, they override the policy of not taking out books. If you have a fine, they allow you in COVID to take out a book. So it's an over, override. What would be the nafkamina? If you have $5 in your pocket, should you pay it out? If you say that it, the fine doesn't exist, then you don't have to pay it out. If you say the fine exists, really, if you have five dollars, you should pay the fine before they give you the book. Then the, take you out, uh, give, let you to take out a new book. So I'm just using that as an example as the smachlekes between tumas ames hutra b'tzibur. When we say that the tzibur is tame, do we say that the fact that we allowed you to bring a carbon is because we look as if there is no tume over here when the tzibur is tame? When the tzibur is uh, tame, there is no tum over here, and we allowed you to bring the 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 carbon despite the fact that it's tame. It's it doesn't exist. The fact of tumas amaze does not exist if the tzibur is tame. It's totally permitted. Therefore, what the Gemara is saying over here is that even if the kohen would have a friend visit him, and that friend died right in his room, and the kohen gadol becomes tame, we would not uh, be, have a problem with that because the we would allow the Kayin Gadol to do the service Betuma because Tuma Sames is permitted to be done with the Tzibur. During the, during, uh, if the Tzibur, and he represents the Tzibur, and therefore Tuma Sames would be permitted. Ravina Amar, Ravina says, Afila Tema Tuma Sames Tuchuyi We could even say that we could hold like the opinion that holds Tuma Sames is duchuya is overridden by tzibur. And that, and that means that if there would be another way for you to avoid this problem, try to avoid the problem. So, according to this opinion, 
really, you should not allow anybody to visit the Kayan Gadol to avoid the problem of somebody dying right in his room. Because the, if, we, if he, somebody dies, it's only a Bidyevid that we allow the Kayan Gadol to serve. So the answer is, the reason why we allow people to visit the Kayan Gadol, his friends, to visit him, because Tumas Ames Loi Shechicha. It's not so common that somebody will die. Uh, Tumas Ames is not Shechich. And therefore, uh, therefore, it's not common that uh, somebody's going to die right visiting him. Thomas Beis it's more very likely that when he'll have relations with his wife, she could possibly become a Bayon leader. So I'm more concerned about him being with his wife than for him to be with friends. Now the Gemara goes off on a tangent. And if you remember, we had this Gemara in Pesachim a few times. Thomas Ames, when, when, the, when the Tzibur is Tomei Meis, either all the Kahanama Tomei Meis, all the Tzibur is Tomei Meis, and so therefore, you're allowed to bring the carbon oil and you're allowed to bring uh, carbon Pesach, remember that. So Rav Nachman says, It's totally permitted when it comes to regard to the Tzibor. We don't look at any Tumas Ames, and even L'Chathchile, it's okay to bring it. Rav Sheish It's only an overriding thing. It's, we override the Tuma when it comes to the Tzibor. And the Gemara is going to explain what would be the Nafkamina, what would be the difference. So the Gemara says, in that family, that base av means the part of the family that would serve on a particular day. In other words, we know that every week performed a family of Kahanim, they took over the base of Migdash for one week, and they're called a Mishmar. And they divided the family into six base avs each day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Another part of the family did. Um, did the service for that particular day. So now, let's say you have people who, in that particular day, let's say on a Monday, you have half the people uh, went to the Duke's Levaya and they became Tom Mace. And some of them are still Tahar. Everybody agrees that the carbon Tomit should be done by the Tahar part of the family. Everybody would agree that the Taharim should be doing the carbon Sibor and not the Tameyam. Because you have Tahrim right there. Uh, why should you have Tameyam do it? Ki pligi, the argument is, ki uh, pligi la duri la tui Tahrim be base avachrina. In other words, if the entire base av, the entire Monday group, was totally Tame, do they have to borrow, take from another part of the family, let's say the family that's uh, going to do the service on Tuesday, do they tell them, listen, everybody of the Monday group is Tameh, we're going to take somebody from the Tuesday group to do the carbon Tameh, because we're totally Tameh. So Rav Nachman, um, you don't have to, Rav Nachman says, you don't have to go so far. Hatter he b'tzuber. When the Kohanim are Tameh, it's totally permitted with, when dealing with Karbanas Tzibar. V'loy mahadrinan. And we don't, we don't search for new Kohanim. That's it. Rav Sheish Shesama, no, d'chuyi he b'tzuber. It's overriding when it comes to the tziba, umahadrinam, and we could do what, what we can to try to bring it patahara. It's only when it's impossible to bring it patahara, then Rav Sheshis would agree, bring it patuma. But here, it's possible to take some kahanam that are on the Tuesday's group and bring him over onto the, onto the Monday's group. And therefore, Rav Sheshis says, that's, that's what you're supposed to do. Ike de Amri, there's another opinion that's even more lenient on the tuma hutra b'tziba. Afila hecha de ike even if the Monday group have some of the kahanim that are tahar and some of the kahanim that are tamei. By he base av, by who base av in that family alone, pali Rav Nachman ve'ama av they name tameim. Rav Nachman will hold that. Let the tameim do it, even though right there in that base av in the Monday's group you have part of the group that's uh, tahar. The tameim kahanim can do it. Why? Because the whole Thomas Mace Bitsibo Rachmon and Sharye, anytime you have Thomas Mace Bitsibo, the Torah permits it. So we're Daf Zayin Omer Alef. Omer Rav Sheshis, Rav Sheshis says, Beno Amin Allah. How do I know my, my opinion? My opinion is that Tuma is the Chuya He Bitsibo, which means it's overridden. So just to introduce so we will know what we're talking about over here, you look at my screen over here, I have the Psukim. The Posuk says that this is what we should be familiar with that the Torah wanted you to bring a minchas ha'oimer. In other words, we cannot eat the new crop that was, pr that was planted 
uh, from Tishrei, from Rosh Hashanah, till after the Minchas HaOimer was brought in the Beis HaMikdash. It's sort of like, like your first dollar should be dedicated to Hashem. Let's say you open a store, you know how they hang up the dollars, uh, the first dollar, the first profit. Your first Chodosh that comes from the new crop should be gifted to, as a gift to Hashem as in the form of a Mincha. And I, I guess you're probably familiar, we don't use wheat. What do we use? We use barley. barley. Uh, right, okay. barley. So we don't, it doesn't say that clearly in the Pasuk, but it's, it's a tradition from Chazal that this uh, was used. So basically, the Torah says, Basically, what they would do is they would, on Motse uh, Pesach, Right, the night of Chalamoid, the first night Chalamoid, they would cut about about an eifa of uh, three eifas of barley, okay, at night. The next day, they would sift it and grind it in order to produce an oimer of that barley flour, okay. Very thirteen thirteen sifting processes they did in order to get the purest, finest flour made from barley. And then they added a little oil on it, and then they added lavoina, and then they made a tnufa in the base of Migdash. The kind that was doing it made a tnufa. This means the day after um, the day after Shabbos, which means the day after Yom Tev of Pesach. The kind waves it. So imagine flour. Uh, barley flour with oil and frankincense and it's waved in six directions and then the Torah says uh, the Torah doesn't say what you do with it but we know that you make a kamitza from it unusual most minchas that have to do with the tzibur you throw the whole thing onto the mizbeach here the coin makes a kamitza throws the kamitza onto the fire of the mizbeach and I guess they bake the rest of the, the flour into matzahs which were eaten by the Kahanim of that Mishmar. Okay? But the Torah says, that's called the Minchas HaOimer. The Torah says, V'asisem b'yoyim ha-nifchem oimer This is important. Keves tamim ben shnasoy la This is not the carbon uh, musaf of Chalamoid. This is the day that you brought the Oimer. The Torah says, you should bring a sheep, a young ben shnasoy la oila. For for a, for an oila that day that you did that along with this mincha you bring an oila now look closely over here and you see something different umincha soy and the mincha of this oila was shnei esroinim soilis normally the mincha the gift along with the carbon oila for a sheep was one isarin soilis here you bring two esroinim soilis so that's that's the only difference okay now you know what the what the carbon Minchas HaOimer was. So the Gemara says, the time, Rav Shaisa says, How do I know? Tanya, we learned to the Braisa. Minchas Oimer. A person was standing right there, ready to throw the Minchas, the Kamitza of the Minchas Oimer onto the Mizbeach. And while in its hand, some maybe a Sheretz landed on him, and the, 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 the thing became Tomei. Oimer, we tell him, you should try, that's it, the service is puzzle, and you should try to redo the Oimer, and uh, basically, the, the cutting of the wheat, this is the point, the cutting of the flour, of the barley, had to be done at night. So it's only if you haven't, you actually made extra barley, then you tell him, okay, redo the whole carbon Oimer. The end sham says the brisa elihi. If you only have this oimer, if you only have this barley, either there's a shortage of barley or you didn't cut any barley at night, oimer light. We tell the kain that's right on the mizbeach, have a pikeach, be shrewd about it, ushtaik and be quiet and just do it betoma. So katanimius, a partial quote over here is oimer umavin achreha tachtel that we try to bring another carbon oimer because the first one became tame so we see that if there's a possibility to replace the first minchas oimer we do so i so we see from here this brisa seems to align itself with rav Sheish's opinion that tumma is dechuyeh hibit sibar so amar rav nachman rav nachman say no my dina i will agree hechad ike shirayim la'achila i would agree on this case that tumma is dechuyeh bit sibar because because 
we want that the rest of the carbon oymet to be eaten by the kahanim. And here, by you throwing it onto the mezbeach, at the end of the day, the rest, the, 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 the shirayim, the leftovers, which were supposed to be baked into barley matzahs, are not going to be able to be eaten by the kahana because it was done betuma. So therefore, even Rab Nachman will agree in this case with a mincha that part of it is supposed to be eaten by the kahanim. You should we hold tuma dechuya he bitzibar. If only the only time we say tuma hutre bitzibar is only if it's like an oila with the total with the total animal and the total service is done on the mezbeach. So the meisve, I'll ask you a question. Ho yamakrav minchas parim ve'el mukvasim. A person was bringing the mincha that came with the musaf. Let, it seems that on sukkis, let's say, you brought parim, elim, ukvasim, different types of mincha, along with shechting the carbon oilers of cows, rams, and sheep. You brought minchas, right? Shloisha esroinim la par, ushne esroinim la oil, visarin la keves, right? Different amounts. But while you're bringing the whole thing on the mezbeach, and these things were totally burnt on the mezbeach, because, norm, uh, like I said, a normal mincha, you just throw the whole flour onto the mezbeah. The nit mezbiyadai, it becomes tame in your hand. The b'risa says, Oimer, we try, umavian acharechas tachtel. We try to replace it. Vim ein sham elihi, if you only have this flour and there's no other wheat flour anymore, Oimer, la, we tell him, evi keachosh soich. Be, be shrewd about it and be quiet, just do it betumah. But really, we try to get him to do it betara as soon as it became tame. So, my love, don't you want to say that we're talking about over here parim elim kvas and the chag? We're talking about the the oilers that were brought along the musaf of of sukkahs, let's say, where there's a lot of where there's a lot of uh, uh, minchas that are brought, and we tell them, listen, if it was possible to do it betahara, do try to do it betahara. We lost you again. somebody in here you got me yep you got me yeah here yeah. we here yeah. we here we clearly see here leak we clearly see that um here we clearly see that we um we try to do it bitahara as much as we can and we don't say oh it became tommy just do it anyway we said we said we try to test to see if there's a replacement Amalach Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman says those carbonates, parim, elim, ukvasim, are totally different. Loi. It's not what you think it is. Parim is par avoidizara. It's talking about the par avoidizara. That means it's a carbon seabar. And why did they bring this cow for an oiler? Because the Torah says that if, if the Sanhedrin made a wrong psak and told you to bring it told you to bring a carbon, uh, told you to do Avaidazara, and, and the Tzibur did the Avaidazara to atone for that Avera, they bring a par Helem Dova Shal Tzibur. And that's called the par Avaidazara. Now, you don't have to bring it on a particular time. You see, we're using this word interchangeably that Tuma Hutra is that the, when, when the Tzibur is Tome, you bring the carbon Betume anyway. That's only if the carbon it had a set time that you had to bring it like a carbon tamid, a carbon musaf. But if the tzibar has to bring a carbon, but it could be any other, it could be any day that they choose to bring it, then we would not say tumahotra b'tzibar. And that's what we're talking about over here. By the power of Oydizara, Afagav the tzibar, even if it was a tzibar, Rab Nachman would agree, Rab Nachman, who normally holds Tuma Hotra Bitsiver, Kevin the like Kviyale Zaman, Mahadrina, since we don't have a set Zaman for it, then we still try to we try to do it betahara elim. What's the case of rams? Is not it's not a tzibur ram. It's the eloy shela aaron. It's the isle that Aaron brought or the kain gadol brought from his own personal pocket for kain gadol for yom kippur service. So it's not a it, although it's the afagav the kviyah lezman. Even though it had to be brought at a specific time, which is. Yom Kippur, Kevin the Yachid who Mahadrinin, since it belongs to the Yachid, since it belongs to only Aharon, we try to try to do it betahara. Kevasim sheeps. What are we talking about there? We're talking about the keves habam in Oimer. We're talking about the sheep that comes with the Oimer, the Ikish, and, and basically we're talking about the minchas Oimer. 
You see, that's the mincha that came with that sheep of, of, that you brought on Shavuos. That's what we're talking about there. The Ika Shurayim Lachila, because there's leftovers that are supposed to be eaten to the Kahanim, and therefore Rab Nachman would agree that in such a case, you'd say, Tuma Dechuyah Hibet Sibar. So now, we, again, just to recap where we're holding right by this Mesve. We have a machloikis in the Gemara between Rav Nachman who holds Tuma Hotra Betzibar and Rav Sheshis holds Tuma Dechuyah He Betzibar. But Rav Nachman is qualifying himself and saying, I only said Tuma Hotra Betzibar is only for a carbon Tzibar that had to be brought at a certain time. A carbon Tzibar that you could bring at any time you want, like a Par Helem Davash Tzibar, a Par Avaydah Zara, which technically... The, the Jews could atone, the, 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 the Eden could atone themselves any which day they want, that was never Tomo Hotra Bitsibar. And a Yachid, we don't say Hotra Bitsibar, it's not, it's a, it's, if it's a carbon Yachid, certainly not, even if it's Kvir Leizman. And if there's a Shirayim La'achila, we wouldn't say uh, Hotra Bitsibar. Anyway, so the Gemara says like this, Meisve, another question against Rav Nachman. The Mishnah says, Dam, blood, Blood of a carbon, shenitba that became tome uzroke, and you sprayed it on the mezbeach anyway. Bishoygig, if you did it by mistake, hortza the the carbon is appeasement, it's good. Bemezid, but if you sp- spray the blood that became tome on purpose on the mezbeach loy hortza, you didn't successfully you didn't successfully uh, get a cup a kapara. Now, it's important to say when we say you didn't get a kapara, really you did get a kapara. Because, because when when the, when you spray something on on the mizbeach, even if it's tame, we know that there's the special ornament worn by the kain gadol called the tzitz, and the tzitz brought appeasement. That if you brought blood on the mizbeach betuma, the carbon works anyway. But what the rice is saying over here is that you're not allowed to even eat the leftover, the remaining part of the carbon. You're not allowed to eat it at all because it's a knas. You went ahead and sprayed the blood betuma on the mezbeach. The rabbanon said that the basar, the meat of the carbon, should not be eaten. So the Gemara thought that we're talking about a tzibur carbon, and we say that what bemezid, you bemezid, you cannot eat that carbon. It doesn't work. But if tuma hutra betzibur. So if Tumah Hutra Bitsibar, so if you did it on purpose, what's the problem? You should be able to have a good carbon seabar, and the Kahanam should be able to eat, eat the meat of that carbon because Tumah Hutra Bitsibar. So the Gemara answers a simple tarot. Ki Tanya He, that price is talking about the Yachid, that the carbon that became Tame, the blood became Tame, is a carbon Yachid. So everybody holds a carbon Yachid is not permitted if you do it Betuma. That's why. That's why it's not a question from that brisa. But Toshma, come and hear this brisa. Alma hatzitz meratza. What would the tzitz bring appeasement? What would be it, 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 appeasement? Would not the good word? It's called amnesty. That means if you if, if things that are done by the evet, we say let it slide. The carbon is kosher. Al adam balabasa balachelav. You have the blood, the meat, the fats. Shenitma that became tamei. No matter how it became Tomei, if you did it by mistake, on purpose, or somebody forced someone to make the blood Tomei, and, or Baratza, and you did it on purpose, Ratz and Mezid are pre- pretty much the same thing. Whether it's a carbon Yochid, whether it's a carbon Seber, you could bring it on the Mezbeach, and everything is kosher. But the Tzitz made it kosher. In other words, without the Tzitz, it wouldn't be kosher. So, if you want to say that there is no tuma when it comes to the tzibar, what do I need the tzitz to tell me that it's a kosher comrade with the evid? The fact that the Koyan Gadol wore this, the tzitz, that makes it kosher? Even without the Koyan Gadol wearing that tzitz, it's kosher. Amalach Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman will tell you, when does the Brice when do, the, the, the says that tzitz, uh, gives you amnesty at the yochid on a carbon yochid the tzitz gives you amnesty on a carbon seba you're right you don't need the tzitz to tell you that it's kosher it's kosher even without because tuma hutra betziba the ibai seima if you want I can tell you I feel the tzibur you could even say that we're talking about a carbon tzibur 
And yet, you still need the tzitz. Why? On those carbonas that you didn't have to bring it on a specific time. It's a carbon tzibor, like the par helem dava shetzibor. That could be brought, and there's not a specific time that it had to be brought. It could be brought on any day. If the tzibar had a chiv to bring a par helem dava shetzibar, if it was brought betame, then the tzitz would be miratze. Because since it's a carbon that does not have a set time, then you don't say Tuma Hutra Betzibor. So let me point out to you, we're going to just learn about this again. I just want to say, this thing that the Kayin Gadol wears right over here, that sits, which is that, that sits is that um, head bre- head, uh, headband, so to speak, that said Kodesh Lashem. When the Kayin Gadol wears that, the Torah says that God forgives everybody. But not for every Avera that you do. God forgives the Averas that are done, that if you bring a carbon betuma, if the Kayin Gadol is wearing that, then you don't have to be worried about it. Th- that's what we're talking about over here. So the Gmesve, g- oh, we're going to uh, ask you a question from a Pasuk. It says, Venosa Aaron Esavoin HaKadoshim. What does that mean? Aaron will carry the Avera that you do, Bekachim. When he's wearing the tzitz, automatically the Jews get amnesty from Averis that are done with Kachim. What kind of Averis? Says the Bryce of He is of in Hunaise. Which Averis do we get amnesty for? Im Avoin Pigol, if it's the Avera that if a Koyim brings a carbon and has in mind that we're going to eat this carbon outside Yerushalayim. That's what we're talking about here. Normal Pigol is Chutz Lizmana, here it's Chutz Lumkoyimai. Hai Kerem Nemar, the Pasuk says, Lo Yeratzeh. If a carbon had if a koyin had such a thought in his head, the carbon doesn't work. So it doesn't matter. It's going to be a puzzle of carbon. So that cannot be what the tzitz is coming to say. It's kosher. Vima If it's talking about the koyin says, thinks when he's bringing this carbon that we're going to eat it, uh, the meat of this carbon a week later, if he has such a bad thought in his head, the koyin is, that we would not say that the carbon is kosher. Because Hare Kavar Nema, because the Pasuk says when it comes to Noiser, Loi Yechashev. It's not considered a kosher carbon. So, with back, the Brysa wants to know what Avera, with, with the Kayan Gadol wearing this seats, would he bring amnesty for? So, we go to Zion on the base. Ha'ena Noisi Ela Alvoin Tuma Shuhutra Miklala Batsibor. It only brings amnesty for Avera of Tuma. That means that if a carbon yachid was brought, and only later, let's say, we find out that the blood was tame. After, let's say, the, the coin sprayed the blood on the mezbeach, a guy brought a carbon chattas, a personal carbon chattas, and after we, br- we sprayed the blood on the mezbeach, somebody tells him, oh, it was tame. We don't say he has to bring a new carbon. Why? Because the coin goggle, by wearing the sits, provided amnesty for that person. And that he, he was yaitse, but the evidence he was yaitse, that carbon chattas. Why we say that? Because the Bryce says, because Tuma is always permitted Betzibor. Tuma is permitted Hutra from its normal rule of being Asar when it comes to the Tzibor. So, Yachid, we say, it's the chui, it, it sits, provides amnesty. But when it comes to a Tzibor, the Bryce clearly says that with a Tzibor, it's totally permitted. So here, we have a Tana that actually argues against Rav Sheshis, the castle of Rav Sheshis. This Tana clearly says that the Tuma, Rav Sheshis, who is an Amorah, cannot argue on this Tana, who clearly says that Tuma is Chutra Betziba. So the easy answer is Tanoihi. It is a Machloikis Tanoim. Is Tuma Chutra Betziba? Is totally permitted or overridden? The Tanya we learned in Ebraisa. Tzitz, that, that head 